Today my guest is Debbie Must. Debbie, how you doing? Hi, good, thanks. Um, enjoying Code Mesh? I am. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Um, uh, tell me about your job. Where do you work? I work at a company called Computer Helper Publishing, and we make a mainly database app that takes care of membership, contribution, accounting, scheduling, payroll for churches. For churches, okay. Mm -hmm. That sounds interesting. Um, and we were talking earlier about uh, some of the challenges of uh, uh, installing, distributing and installing mm -hmm. the, your software at the church site. So right. how, first, how do you distribute? you put it on CDs or is it a download from a website? We do. What? We're basically a shrink wrapped app. Okay. So we um, you know, put together and install, burn it to a CD, send it out to, we have approximately ten to 11,000 customers. Mm -hmm. And they're all over the world? Uh, mostly the U.S., but yeah, okay. there are some scattered around the world. All right. Um, so on that is a uh, some sort of installing program, right? Right. Uh, that they can run. Uh, and what are the challenges for getting this thing installed on the church machines? Okay. Well, our app has a couple of things in general that have been the most challenging for me. The first of which is that we need the ability to install more than one instance of our application on their computer. Um, if they need to. Um, a lot of churches will install one copy of our software for their main church situation and perhaps another for a daycare or some other situation. Mm -hmm. So it's not unusual for them to have more than one So your, your, your software can only handle one organization. If they need two organizations, they need to install They need a twice. second install, that's okay. true. Okay. Which is that's... not such a common situation. Right, exactly. So yeah. that's been very challenging. And, and the um, uh, Microsoft Windows installer type installation does not handle that very well. So mm -hmm. there are some certain workarounds that have to be done. The other challenge that we run into is that because we have 10, 11,000 customers and we're simply you know, mailing these CDs out, we have these things have to be pretty rock solid in terms of not falling apart <laughs> on a normal type install situation. Okay, so they need to kind so of we don't want to generate a lot of phone calls from these installers. And they need to be easy, right? I mean, exactly. They're not sending them off to IT departments. So my church doesn't. Right, no, IT this department. is just whoever, whatever volunteers working that day might be installing. So they might not have a full time so. employee, much less a right. full time IT department. Right. So this has to be pretty, well, very user friendly yeah, in terms okay. of how So you're sending it off to the course. church lady in, in right. uh, Omaha, Nebraska, and she's installing it, and she might have to install it twice. Right. All right. So those are two big challenges. Mm -hmm. How did you solve that? Well, I um, it took a little bit of time, but we did figure out that there are ways that Install Shield and the MSI type package in general can handle that. And what actually ends up happening is we build the install with, believe it or not, ten different copies of the same install essentially on the CD. Hmm. So there, it's what's called uh, different instances okay. of the install. So, uh, when what's we, the distinction you want to tell me? An instant, what's, the, what's the distinction? What's the difference between each of the ten? Basically, a GUID. Okay. <laughs> All right. um, each, each install has, well, was that so has that its own ID. So, they can install it up to ten times? Is that to solve right. a pathing issue? Right. So, if they wanted to install, install it an eleventh time, they're then out of they're out of luck. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. We, unfortunately, we had to make that restriction. Okay. When we moved from install script, which was a little bit more flexible, but not quite as reliable. Mm, we move true. from install script type to the MSI type of install. But when you move to an MSI, it's a little bit more structured. There are uh, more rules involved, and basically what we ended up having to do is to build potentially 10 different instances of the install. Oh, and the only difference is the install path. Install path and the ID involved. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. That's clever uh, thinking outside of the box solution. So, yeah. uh, is there anything you did to make it easier for your end users to install? Well, what we've tried to do is um, we are a WinForms app. There are several Microsoft um, prerequisites that have to be installed, um, the .NET framework, certainly. Um, we have to install um, SQL Server, so that's something that's required. We have to install, part of our app is written in VB6, so there are certain VB6 uh, libraries and runtimes that have to be installed. So there are a whole lot of these prerequisite files that we haven't written, but we still have to distribute to go with them and third-party controls, things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's a matter of um, getting those out there reliably without the customer really even knowing that that's going on. Right. You know what I mean? So they install it, all this stuff sort of gets installed without their knowledge, but it's there. Okay, and that technology is built into uh, install sheet. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. A lot of it's copying files to the right place mm -hmm. and exactly. uh, updates and registry settings. Right, registering them, getting them in the assembly okay. if need be. Okay, it sounds like a pretty old uh, application. 
Uh, parts of it are, yes. Yeah. <laughs> there are parts that are older and parts that are that are much more current. So. Okay. And are, are you, any plans to rewrite this application? Uh, that's what we're doing, actually. In the 21st century? Yes. yes. Right. That, that, that's been our main push lately. Is What's nice about the project is we have we have this VB6 code base that we the company has decided to completely <clears throat> scrap and rewrite Greenfield. So we're completely just saying, okay, this is the functionality we had before. We're going to rewrite it in .NET and okay. start over. So meantime, it's nice because we need yeah. to redesign it. In yeah, and, then, and if you do that, then a lot of those problems will go away. Exactly. Um, I mean, they'll still need to have a single click, simple installation. Right. But this idea of uh, of uh, multiple installations of the same software, you can architect around that. Right. We have so to support it for a little while until the VB6 code goes away, and then we can get rid of it. Okay. Well, that's a good example of uh, finding a limitation of existing software yeah. and finding a clever solution to run around it. I congratulate you for that. Thanks. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Uh -huh. favorite things in life are technology and my friends because friends make life fun and technology keeps the brain stimulated and keeps things interesting.